So, let us uh, give a brief introduction to what uh, would be done uh, in today's class. Um, we will uh, do Stirling's formula and um, uh, we will also do applications of the microcanonical distribution, uh, particularly classical ideal gas, which is what we were doing earlier. And um, this uh, simple problem such as particle restricted to move in 1D, it is like a particle confined in a 1D box and we will also do collection of spins in a magnetic field. And uh, very importantly, uh, we will do canonical distribution, the derivation of these uh, uh, probability for uh, our system to occupy a particular uh, energy state, uh, that formula will be derived. So, uh, overall an intense uh, class, especially the last one which contains a lot of uh, conceptual uh, things which uh, would, uh, you know, you have to uh, understand it, you have to imbibe it and then you have to apply it. Okay. So, uh, instead of doing the Stirling's formula, which we will do uh, just in a while, let us uh, finish this uh, classical ideal gas, which is we have done a part of it. So, we have this classical ideal gas and as I said that it is uh, the simplest prototype system for any statistical mechanics problem. So, uh, we have calculated the number of microstates and we have been uh, using this capital omega to uh, denote the number of microstates. We have of course, calculated the volume of a hypersphere in um, say uh, 6 n dimensional space or rather a 3 n dimensional space for the momentum which is um, restricted between a root over 2 m e to root over 2 m into e plus d or uh, that small energy interval is given and we have calculated the number of microstates there. But coming down to a simpler problem, uh, we uh, can do it in 3 dimension and uh, which is easy to do. Uh, so, this is like a d cube r i and a d cube p i and uh, this uh, is subject to, uh, this one is subject to that uh, condition which is what we have said. So, this is uh, a p square or p i square and uh, 2 m uh, e plus uh, d e or you can call d e to be equal to delta which is what uh, same as delta. Okay. Uh, the understanding is that uh, d e or delta is much smaller than e. So, the shell in which you are considering or rather you are calculating the number of states or microstates that uh, is much smaller than the energy itself. And the coordinate space integral uh, gives you a volume and uh, this one uh, of course, can be uh, done as, um, uh, so this is like a 4 pi a p square d p and that gives you a 4 third pi p cube and we are doing an indefinite integral because it goes from 0 to p. So, we have not used uh, uh, sort of limit for this. And uh, if you use this relation that uh, p square equal to 2 m e, uh, this number of microstates they go as um, uh, 4 pi v by 3 um, and then you have uh, 2 m to the power 3 by 2 and um, energy to the power 3 by 2. So, uh, as the energy grows, the number of microstates grow as e to the power 3 by 2. And uh, from there, uh, we can calculate uh, the entropy which is nothing but k log omega. Uh, omega is the number of microstates, uh, you take a log of that and then multiply it by k and this gives you a k and a log of all these 4 pi v divided by uh, 3 and 2 m to the power 3 by 2. Uh, so, this is a constant for a given uh, mass of the particle or a volume and then uh, there is a 3 by 2. So, let me write down that 3 by 2 here and a log of e. Okay. So, it goes as log of e and uh, this is uh, what the entropy of the system is. And we know what entropy is good at, the entropy is actually good at uh, giving you the uh, temperature which is, uh, so we have a 1 over T, we can calculate the temperature uh, which is del S del E 
um, for a given v and n and uh, we can also calculate um, uh, the p by t using a del s uh, del v and e by n. So, I uh, leave this small calculations in order to suppose you do this uh, uh, let us call it as equation A and equation B. Um, you get the temperature of the system by sort of taking the derivative with respect to E. So, log of E is 1 over E and um, so that will give you the temperature and uh, if you calculate the pressure at by taking this uh, I am so sorry that this is del S del V. So, uh, if you take uh, the derivative of entropy with respect to the volume, you would get um, this uh, the equation of state which is PV equal to NKT okay? and you see the volume is inside this log and then it is easy to say uh, what that is going to be. So, this is a simple uh, problem and uh, we can uh, sort of solve more uh, I mean such problems in order to get the, uh, the pressure uh, or rather the equation of state or some thermodynamic parameters such as uh, temperature etcetera or we can uh, calculate other energy uh, quantities as well. Okay. Uh, before we go on to the next problem, let me uh, do uh, what is called as uh, Stirling's formula. And um, in statistical mechanics, you would need the Stirling's formula a number of times. And uh, let us state the result. The result states that log of n factorial is n log n minus n, where n is large. So, what it means is that uh, when you take the log of factorial of a large number, it can be approximated as. So, this is not really equal to, but uh, it is uh, almost equal to uh, n log n minus n. So, the factorial goes away and you get uh, this gets replaced by a simple formula. Okay. So, how do we use this or rather where do we use this? We will just see in a while, but let me uh, try to derive it um, or rather show you how this comes about. And uh, let me take the left hand side and which is ln of n factorial, this is equal to log of uh, then you open a square bracket and it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 all the way up to 2 into 1 that is the n factorial. And uh, you know that when you take a log of uh, x y, it is equal to log x plus log y. Okay. And uh, that is how this becomes equal to log of uh, uh, n plus uh, log of n minus 1 and so on. And then it is a log 2 plus a log 1 and something that go to 0 like the last term but it does not matter, we will just write it like that and then we will write it as a sum k equal to 1 to n log of k. Okay. Now, um, usually uh, one can actually uh, trivially replaces it by an integral and um, do that integral analytically to get this formula. Uh, but uh, let me uh, sort of do a little uh, better than that in the sense that let me uh, try to show that this indeed uh, becomes an integral. Um, so, uh, let me plot this thing, uh, it will look like this. Okay? So, this is log of uh, x and versus x and uh, what we need to do is that when you try to calculate uh, the sum or the integral of this we uh, break it up into uh, several such um, uh, trapezium and or rather uh, here if they are too small and close to each other they can be considered as rectangle and so on. So, we just uh, calculate the area and the curve by summing up the areas of each of the rectangles that we see there okay? and uh, this is easy uh, thing to do and let us say this is delta x and suppose there are m intervals okay so m number of intervals between these 
1 because the lower value is 1 and the upper value is some n. So, um, and uh, let us take a, a particular value here, uh, let us call this as log of x k and uh, each one of them is delta x. So, we will have to you know uh, when we complete uh, or rather when we try to compute this um, area under the curve, uh, we will have to multiply the function with uh, the width of each of these uh, rectangles or uh, the y is given by log of x k uh, for a kth point and then you multiply it by this delta x. This is a standard procedure to calculate uh, an integral. So, the area under the curve actually is Uh, this is let us call it as a, this is equal to k equal to 1 to m, m is the number of intervals as I said and it is a log of uh, x k uh, multiplied by delta x as you can see. Okay. So, as m tends to infinity that is the number of uh, uh, these divisions, uh, these intervals they tend to be very large, uh, you can actually um, uh, convert this sum into an integral uh, uh, with reliability which means it becomes better and better approximation. All right. So, uh, this becomes equal to 1 to n log of x dx, uh, this is equal to limit, uh, uh, you can see limit to be written as l i m. Uh, which is same as what I write as L t. Okay. Uh, so, limit um, m tending to infinity, m tending to infinity and then there is this sum k equal to 1 to m and then log of x k um, and uh, into delta x. Okay. So, that is the uh, equivalence between the sum and an integral and um, uh, this is sort of has to be calculated. And now, what we do is that we, uh, what is delta x? Delta x is a total uh, length of the, of the interval which is nothing but n minus 1 and divided by the number of intervals. And this is nothing but equal to n minus 1 because uh, the length of the interval, uh, the last term is n and the first term is 1. So, this is n minus 1 by m. Okay. And it is well understood that n and m both are very large numbers. All right. And um, so, what is x k? that is what is the value of this variable at the kth point and that is equal to the initial value of x plus a k delta x. Okay. And uh, this is the initial value is nothing but 1. Uh, so, this becomes equal to 1 plus uh, k delta x which is nothing but 1 plus k into n minus 1 by m. Okay. That is coming from the top uh, line that we have written. So, uh, eventually the integral becomes 1 to n log of x dx is nothing but a limit m tending to infinity and there is a sum over a k from 1 to m and log of uh, 1 plus k n minus 1 by m uh, multiplied by uh, k into n minus 1 by m. That is your delta x. Okay. So, that is your delta x and this is your that log of x. Okay. Because n and m both are very large, n minus 1 divided by m is approximately equal to 1 okay. because n and m are same. So, then uh, we have this integral as 1 uh, going from 1 to uh, say for example, 
1 to n uh, log of x dx is equal to sum over k equal to 1 to n and log of uh, 1 plus k. Okay. Now, uh, realize that uh, log of 1 is 0 and this sum goes from 1 to n. So, we can simply uh, write that this equal to k equal to 1 to n log of k. And uh, so, that sort of uh, tells you that you know uh, which we did not want to write this directly as integral of a log from 1 to n, uh, but that can be rigorously proved that this, uh, this sum is what we have at hand uh, because this is the sum that comes here in the Stirling's formula and uh, this uh, which is nothing but equal to log of n factorial. So, this is equal to log of n factorial. So, that is nothing but equal to log x or uh, natural log of x uh, dx. Okay. Sometimes uh, I will just keep saying log, but it actually means natural log and most of the time the in statistical mechanics we uh, come across natural log rather than log, the log base 10, though this uh, base e. Um, so, this can be now evaluated easily by using what is called as an integration by parts uh, by taking this uh, log as a first function and 1 because there is no other function. So, we take 1 as the second function and if you do that then this actually comes out as uh, x log x minus x. So, that tells you that uh, we have uh, this formula that we have is log of n factorial is equal to n log n minus n. Okay. Let me write it. So, this is log n. Uh, you can put uh, this from 1 to n and uh, uh, sort of see that. So, this integral is this and this uh, you just put it uh, between the two limits and, and 1 and you will see that uh, 1 gives you 0 because there is no uh, log of 1 is 0. So, this is the formula that we use and this is called as Stirling's formula and uh, it is used heavily at least in the calculation of the microstates and even later. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, do another problem. Uh, let me state the problem first. Uh, so, this Stirling's formula can be applied and also you know how to uh, calculate uh, these number of uh, you know microstates in a microcanonical ensemble. So, the example problem is that that we have n localized uh, non-interacting spin half particles in a magnetic field. H. Okay. So, this is the problem and you have to calculate the number of microstates. And not only that, um, calculate entropy and uh, if other things that are possible. So, let me write it down as uh, uh, other physical properties. Physical means uh, let us talk about other thermodynamic properties. Um, they may be measurable uh, by physical most of the time uh, we mean that they are measurable quantities. Some of them could be measurable, but some of them could give rise to other quantities that are measurable. Okay. All right. So, this is what we have to do and uh, in order to do that uh, we write down the number of microstates. So, we have uh, this energy of the system or rather the Hamiltonian of the system. Uh, now, let me write down the Hamiltonian with the h which is curly h. So, this is Hamiltonian and we also have a magnetic field. So, should not be confused with these two h's. So, one of them is curly h and the magnetic field is this h which is written uh, in normal font. 
okay so this is equal to minus uh, mu 0 uh, h uh, and then uh, this is sigma j uh, j equal to 1 to n okay so there are n spins capital n number of spins uh, spin half so we replace it by this um, or rather we denote it by this um, symbol sigma which should actually stand for Pauli matrices uh, which can take values here uh, they can only take values uh, plus uh, 1 or minus 1 and uh, so this can be in two uh, distinct orientations which are up and down all right so uh, and this mu 0 is the uh, say the, uh, the Bohr magneton or magnetic moment um, and uh, we have n such uh, spins so that this total number is n. Now what happens is that in order to calculate this um, number of microstates you have to understand that out of n uh, there are n 1 number of particles uh, which are in the up state uh, and n 2 number of particles which are in the down state. Okay. And uh, so, uh, total n is equal to n 1 plus n 2 um, and even in this n 1 particles you have uh, suppose uh, you have a uh, up, up, down, up, down and so on. Uh, so, you have a net magnetic moment here to be say 1 unit and then you can also have this and uh, this also uh, have a magnetic moment equal to 1 unit. So, the total number of configurations that one can write uh, with this at a fixed value of energy and number of particles there is no uh, temperature here. So, we have to just write E and N uh, this is equal to uh, N factorial divided by N 1 factorial uh, divided and into N 2 factorial. Okay. And uh, we have to calculate this quantity, but uh, just writing this in this form uh, is not very helpful for the reason that you have to bring in the energy and uh, because this is a function of energy and this energy will give rise to you know temperature and other uh, quantities that are there. And it is easy to calculate the energy because the total energy is given by a minus mu 0 h n 1 which corresponds to the uh, the spins that are pointing up, but uh, this will also have to be added to uh, one that is you know uh, pointing in the downward direction and uh, they have a mutual sign change in between because the sigma j will take plus value here. So, sigma j will be plus 1 and for this sigma j equal to minus 1. Okay. And uh, just see that uh, you do not want to carry on two variables n1 and n2 because they are related by this total number and then we can write this as minus mu 0 h n1 plus a mu 0 h um, n minus n1 and so this is the total energy. So, what we can do is that instead of this n variable we can use the E variable by simply writing uh, the n 1 equal to half of n minus E over mu 0 h and n 2 equal to n 2 equal to half into n plus uh, E over mu 0 h. Okay. So, uh, these two will now replace the denominator of this uh, number of microstates let us denote it by 1 uh, equation number 1. And so, uh, writing the number of microstates in terms of E and N we get this as um, N factorial um, half of n minus e over mu naught h um, factorial and half of n plus e divided by mu 0 h factorial. Now, you see that uh, it is exactly the kind of variables that you want 
um, it is a function of E and N. Of course, it is a function of H, but then H is just an externally applied uh, variable or it is an external magnetic field that you are talking about. So, um, this form is useful because this form can be um, uh, once you compute this thing in closed form, uh, you can get the entropy by taking the log of this and multiplying it by the Boltzmann constant. Okay? Uh, so, log of omega is what is important and when you want to take log of omega, uh, you have to take a log of this n factorial minus log of these two uh, terms which are n minus e over mu 0 h um, and minus log of uh, half n plus mu 0 e over mu 0 h. Okay? I think it is clear because uh, again a uh, log of a by b is log of a minus log of b. This is what has been used. So, the log of the uh, numerator minus the log of the denominator is what is used. Now, we will use Stirling's approximation. To all the three terms, uh, that is the first term on the right, second term and third term all of these three terms will use that and then we can write down uh, with a little bit of uh, algebra uh, this is equal to n log n minus n remember the formula which is uh, log of n factorial equal to n log n minus n and that is what is written here and then the second term would be half of uh, n uh, minus e by mu 0 h um, log of uh, you know half of n minus mu uh, e by mu 0 h that is fine e by mu 0 h and um, uh, plus um, half of uh, n minus e by mu 0 h and um, uh, we also have this other term the third term which is n plus e by mu 0 h uh, log of uh, half n plus e by this h that is missing e divided by mu 0 h and again a plus uh, half of uh, this h that is consistently missing but uh, put it okay so this is uh, the uh, expansion using starling's approximation on each one of the terms now you see that uh, there is a, a term which is uh, n and then there is a term which is half n and half n there uh, so, this minus n will cancel with each of these half n's and then now uh, we shall be left with uh, n log n um, minus half of uh, n minus e by mu 0 h uh, log of half uh, n minus e divided by mu 0 h and uh, there is another term which is minus half n plus e by mu 0 h uh, log of uh, n uh, plus e by mu 0 h. Well, I mean there is no third bracket here, so we'll, uh, we are fine. So, that is your uh, term that is there. And then of course, uh, you have uh, these uh, term that is uh, this term uh, cancels with this term. So, there is no other term that is present in the uh, expression. So, it is a log of uh, omega uh, and uh, it is a function of E and N and you see only E and N on the right hand side. And um, uh, now, we can use that uh, energy per particle just to scale out the, the capital N from the problem, 
So, this is uh, it is equal to E over n and let us call that as small u. So, you will see that per particle is always derived or rather denoted as uh, with a small case. Uh, in this case, it is small u. So, uh, limit E uh, going to uh, E and n both going to infinity that is very large. Uh, so, we have a 1 over n log of omega. Uh, now, this is not a function of E anymore, but we will write it as u n. This is equal to a log 2 um, and uh, there is a half of a 1 minus u by mu 0 h uh, log of uh, 1 minus u by mu 0 h and uh, there is a minus half uh, 1 plus u by mu 0 h uh, log of half. Uh, so, there is a half factor that I missed here half of uh, sorry this half factor is uh, not there because we have taken this uh, half. So, there is no half there here. So, this is fine. So, we will write it as log of that and uh, there is no half there. So, there is a half factor here. So, it is 1 plus uh, u by mu 0 h. So, that is the uh, expression for uh, when we divide the number of microstates by the total number of particles. So, the entropy is Uh, given by. So, this is equal to we will call it uh, entropy per particle. So, it is s over n which is let us call it as s small s which is a function of u which is equal to k log 2 uh, minus half uh, k uh, 1 minus u by mu 0 h. Uh, log of 1 minus u by mu 0 h um, and uh, there is also another term which is uh, almost similar to the second term which is 1 plus u by mu 0 h uh, log of 1 plus u by mu 0 h. So, that gives you the uh, first thermodynamic quantity that is um, an entropy. And as you know that entropy is an important quantity because if you put it in second law of thermodynamics, it gives you uh, information about uh, or rather combined first and second law, it gives you information about the internal energy, it gives you information about work done and all that. So, um, um, importantly here the temperature which is nothing but equal to del S and del U. Um, of course, n constant uh, I am writing it as n uh, and this is equal to uh, k over uh, 2 mu 0 h. So, take a, a derivative with respect to u. Uh, keep in mind that you have a coefficient which uh, depends on u which is 1 minus u by mu 0 h or 1 plus u by mu 0 h and then there is a log term. So, uh, you have to do a sort of x log x. Uh, uh, derivative which gives you a log x plus 1 because x by x will give you 1 and so on. So, that is how we uh, take the derivative and so it is a del s del u um, and uh, so this is equal to log of 1 minus u by mu 0 h um, minus k uh, by 2 mu 0 h uh, log of 1 plus u by mu 0 h. Okay. So, this is the temperature or the inverse temperature you can uh, easily obtain uh, the other I mean you can invert the relationship in order to get u uh, which is equal to the total uh, internal energy divided by n uh, and that uh, will come out a little bit of algebra is required in order to get this, but then you have to uh, convert the. Uh, so, uh, if you have log of x equal to y, you can write x equal to e to the power y and so on. Okay. So, uh, use that and uh, then you would get it as mu 0 h 
uh, tan hyperbolic uh, that is your mu 0 um, h uh, by k t. This is an important quantity this gives you the internal energy per particle which is uh, which depends on uh, the magnetic field in a slightly non-trivial manner there is a linear term uh, here and then there is also another term which depends on um, this uh, uh, tan hyperbolic and uh, there. Uh, so, uh, so, one can actually calculate the magnetization of the system by just simply you know using this thing that u equal to minus m h uh, for small h uh, which is fine uh, and then this gives you the m which is a magnetic moment is equal to mu 0 h uh, tan hyperbolic um, m is equal to mu 0 not h is a tan hyperbolic mu 0 h by k t uh, and so, this is the magnetization of the system and this is an important quantity or it is a measurable quantity. Energy is not a measurable quantity, but however, it is important thermodynamic quantity, but uh, nevertheless magnetization is definitely a measurable quantity. And if you really plot this uh, magnetization, uh, then let me draw to, uh, so it, it goes as uh, a tan hyperbolic which has a form which is like this. So, this is a plus mu 0 h that is the maximum value and this is minus mu 0 h. So, what it means is that uh, when the magnetic field is large enough because that happens at large values of field. Uh, well, this is uh, uh, tan hyperbolic. So, this is more gradual like the one that is shown above. Uh, so, when uh, the magnetic field is large all the spins are pointing in the direction of the field which means that it will have of uh, the energy will be minus mu 0 h or uh, per particle. So, it is capital N into mu 0 h and um, in the other limit when you uh, reverse the magnetic field uh, then uh, you know at, at that instant uh, uh, the all the, the energy of the system is plus mu 0 h and uh, then of course, slowly all the uh, spins start pointing. Uh, down um, uh, or rather the, the spin start aligning with the in the direction of the field and eventually coming to an equilibrium or rather this uh, lowest value. But if we suddenly uh, change the direction of the field then uh, this is what will happen the energy of the system will be plus mu 0 h. And this has important consequences which is what we shall discuss um, in the form of what we call as a negative uh, temperature. Okay. All right, so uh, we have done uh, a few uh, interesting examples, uh, classical ideal gas, uh, then uh, these uh, spin systems and let me do this uh, one more uh, example. So, uh, we use this uh, particle confined in a 1 D box of length L. We have done this problem, uh, but we have not calculated uh, the entropy. So, let me just show that in, in a moment. And so, this is the 0 energy and this is the 2 values. So, the only, uh, so particle confined in a 1 D box it is a free particle. So, let, let me just also add that the free particle. So, the only energy of the system is equal to p square over 2 m and this is a root over 2 m e in the phase space and this is minus root over 2 m e. This problem has been introduced earlier and uh, uh, we take a small uh, you know uh, slice here and calculate the number of microstates and because a negative momentum is also uh, possible that is why we take another slice here and calculate the number of microstates and let us call this uh, these thicknesses as dp. They do not look the same, but they are same. Uh, so, here uh, dp is equal to um, root over m by 2 e 
d e which is coming from p equal to root over 2 m e. So, if you take a d p and write it in terms of d e it will become this. So, the total number of microstates for this e l and within this d e is nothing but 2 l into d p and 2 l is nothing but so l into uh, uh, this uh, d p is nothing but uh, 2 m by uh, e and uh, so there is a 2 there and then there is a 2 which has been adjusted here. So, this is equal to a d e and um, uh, so the entropy again can be calculated for this particle which is free it is equal to a k log omega uh, and which is equal to a k uh, log of uh, L root over 2 m uh, log uh, e to the power minus half. Uh, so, this is equal to a minus half k log um, uh, L into root over 2 m log of e. Again we see that the entropy actually scales as uh, log of e. So, uh, that is how uh, these micro canonical ensemble or the uh, number of microstates that are determined and not only you determine the microstates because this knowing the number of microstates is of no practical use. Uh, what is of practical use is to get the thermodynamic quantities such as entropy such as uh, you know pressure or temperature and so on and we showed a few examples how we can uh, calculate these uh, quantities. Okay. All right. Uh, so, let me um, go on to something that is very important and should be uh, taken very seriously in order to understand the crux of uh, the statistical mechanics, the classical statistical mechanics that we are doing now and uh, this is the uh, derivation of these canonical ensemble. or derivation of the probability um, of that my system is occupying a particular energy state. So, let us say given by E alpha or something and um, why do we do that? We have explained this that micro canonical ensemble is too much of an idealization uh, because you have fixed the number of particles. In, in any case energy is not a measurable quantity. What is measurable is temperature. So, you allow the exchange of energy between the system and its surrounding and let the uh, system come to an equilibrium temperature T and we can now describe the system by this temperature T. And this example has already been given if you keep a cup of coffee in the room and wait for long enough the coffee uh, comes to an equilibrium temperature T with that of the room and uh, this uh, the room acts like a heat bath and temperature of the coffee goes down, but the uh, temperature of the room does not rise because of the there was a coffee present in the system. So, the rest of the room is actually taken as a very large number of copies of this coffee cup. So, everything else so as if this cup of coffee which you have in your hand or which is kept on the table is actually interacting energy with all the other cups of coffee and coming to an equilibrium temperature T. So, my rest of the room which is called as a heat bath actually comprises of very large number of copies of this coffee cup and that is how uh, we define an ensemble and this ensemble of systems which is here which completely you know comprises of uh, a very large number of coffee cups and your cup is your system and you are interested in finding out that what is the probability that your system occupies one of the energy levels. And uh, once again to remind you that we have said uh, thermodynamics gives you only the uh, equilibrium quantities, but it does not tell you the internal structure of the system so that we have gotten this equilibrium quantities and statistical mechanics tries to answer that question. So, now we are uh, worried about that how different particles are distributed in different energy levels. 
so as to give me these uh, thermodynamic parameters such as S, V, T, P and so on and so forth. Okay. So, um, having said that uh, we are uh, going from a N V E ensemble which is micro canonical to a N V T which is canonical. Okay. So, there is no fixed energy, but there is a fixed temperature and this uh, energy is of course, a variable between the system and the surrounding, but if you draw a picture which is what has been shown earlier that uh, you have a system like this, let us call this system as A uh, and uh, this uh, occupies an energy level E R. Um, I have written earlier E alpha. Uh, but I have changed it to R because this alpha and the beta which would be reserved for some uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. So, let us call it as E R and um, this. Uh, so, this is my system which is A and the bath which comprises of all these copies of the system which occupies the rest and this is E R prime and T. Uh, the temperature is T. Uh, the accessible energy levels are E r prime for this uh, system outside and this is A 0 is the total system which is again uh, isolated or rather this is not interacting with anything else and then uh, your system is A. All right. So, total energy of the system is E r. So, this total energy is E r plus E r prime, this is equal to E 0 and E 0 is a constant. Okay. So, the total energy which corresponds to the energy of the system which is A 0, the total energy and that is constant. Now, it is uh, interesting to see that this E r which only occupies a very small fraction of the total energy E 0 and that is equal to E 0 minus E r prime uh, because the total energy is E 0 which is equal to E r plus E r prime. So, E r is written as E 0 minus uh, E r prime. So, this is equal to 1 minus E r prime by E 0. Okay. And this is uh, much, much smaller than 1 okay? uh, because this number is very large um, and uh, because E r prime that is uh, all the uh, copies put together, all the members of the ensembles put together, all the microstates put together takes the, uh, you know, the maximum of the energy E 0 or the, I mean the lion's share of E 0 and that is how this. Uh, fraction is a small fraction. Okay. So, the thing is that, that uh, the energy available to the system is a small fraction of the total energy that is available. So, uh, having said this, um, we can say that the, the reservoir which is the heat bath. So, uh, I will use both the terminology so that you when you read a book, you uh, see both of them and they mean the same thing. The reservoir or the heat bath um, can uh, still be in very large number of microstates. Okay. Your system our system, let me write it as our system is in a specified microstate. I mean one when I say specified microstate, let me put a, a quote around it, which means that it the available number of microstates is very few. Okay? It is very small because the energy that it occupies is a very small fraction and we have seen that these. Um, uh, the ability or rather the uh, this probability to uh, occupy some of the microstates they uh, scale with as uh, some functions of energy. 
uh, is in a specified microstate and you can call it 1 or it is of the order of 1. Okay. So, if that is true, then let me at least uh, start with this uh, thing because there are uh, these to uh, build up the ensemble theory, let me take the number of possible microstates that the uh, these uh, everything else other than our system is in. Okay. So, we calculate this P r which is uh, proportional to. So, this is what the probability that uh, uh, our system is in an available energy level r is proportional to omega prime E r prime. Okay. Uh, you understand this is actually proportional to omega into E r. Okay. So, this is our system and this is taken to be equal to 1. And that is why uh, this is proportional to the number of microstates that all the other members of the ensemble would occupy. So, this is the probability that my system, our system is found in an energy level given as E r, which is proportional to omega prime E r prime because this is equal to 1. So, I will write it once again that this is omega prime E r prime and uh, this is nothing but uh, this is equal to omega prime times E naught minus E r. Okay. And you agree with me that E r is much much smaller than E 0. Now, uh, you are trying to find a probability and initially why did I write it as a product because these are independent uh, quantities. So, when you have independent events, the compound probability is going to be a multiplication of these two events. One event is all the members of the ensemble are uh, all the other members of the ensemble apart from our system, uh, they are occupying certain energy levels E r prime and this is multiplied by the probability that our system is occupying an energy level E r and this is a multiplication of the two because they are independent and uh, so we have left this one out and said that P r is proportional to omega prime. Uh, so, omega prime or the prime variable corresponds to the other members of the ensemble uh, leaving our system and unprime variable refers to our system. So, P r is actually the unprime variable which refers to the to our system. Okay. Now, using this condition that E r is much much smaller than E 0, what we can do is the following that uh, we can do a Taylor expansion of this and uh, uh, instead of doing a Taylor expansion of this omega prime we will do a Taylor expansion of log of log of omega prime um, about this value which is E 0 and taking E r to be much smaller than um, E 0. Okay. So, that gives you a log of omega prime E r prime this is equal to log of omega E 0. Now, this is a constant this you really do not need to worry about because uh, E 0 is a constant and this is the total system which is um, again isolated. And now, we have a del L uh, L n omega prime uh, del E prime um, E r prime minus E 0 and plus higher order terms which we are neglecting at this moment because of this condition that you have E r to be much much smaller than uh, E 0. So, the higher order terms are even smaller and they do not need to be taken into account. So, you drop. So, 1 is a constant the first term is a constant which is uh, uh, taking this uh, the first term in the Taylor expansion. So, just to remind you of the Taylor expansion. So, if you have a x minus x 0 it is equal to f of x 0 plus uh, d f d x 
uh, evaluated at x equal to x 0, x minus x 0 and plus order x minus x 0 square and so on and those terms are dropped which is what we have done here as well. Okay. So, uh, this is a uh, constant and uh, all these terms. Now, if you use um, s is equal to k log omega and then uh, we can also use this uh, 1 over t is equal to del s del e. This is a definition which you should uh, remember. So, it is 1 over t like this. So, that tells you that 1 over t can be written as a k uh, del log omega del e um, and then of course, this is a function of n and v. Uh, so, uh, that tells you that uh, uh, del log omega del e um, uh, n v this is equal to 1 over k t and this quantity is called as beta. Okay? So, beta uh, you will see beta all over uh, in statistical mechanics as long as we do we have uh, this should be remembered that is the inverse of temperature, but there is also a k factor the Boltzmann uh, constant that come appears there and so on. Now, uh, of course, you understand that a beta and beta prime are same we have uh, written down T uh, and T both to be same whereas, we have written the energies to be E r and E r prime. So, that tells us that uh, at equilibrium uh, beta equal to beta prime. Okay? So, that tells us that a log of um, omega prime E r prime which is equal to just a constant and plus this thing which is nothing but um, is equal to beta. So, this is equal to a beta E r prime minus E 0. I hope you understood that why uh, there is just a beta uh, and not a beta prime because they are same. Uh, the our system exchanges energy with the other members of the ensemble and come to an equilibrium temperature T. So, a T and T prime are same which means that beta and beta prime are same. Okay? So, uh, now uh, you see we can also write this as a constant uh, plus uh, beta uh, E r prime. Um, so, this is uh, this is it should be uh, E 0 uh, pardon me for this this is a E 0 minus E r prime this actually went over here as well. So, this is a E 0 minus uh, E r prime and uh, so uh, we can take it as a minus beta E r because this is nothing but E r. Okay? So, this is a constant minus uh, beta E r um, I am so sorry this was correct just a little going back and forth I am so sorry uh, this is uh, really uh, beta E r minus E r prime minus uh, E 0. So, this is really E r prime minus E 0 and this is nothing but a minus E r and that is how this becomes equal to this log of omega prime E r prime equal to constant minus beta E r and so P of E r which is proportional to E to the power uh, or exponential minus beta E r because this quantity log of omega prime E r prime is nothing but uh, P r which is proportional to P r and we have calculated what is omega prime E r prime. So, this is uh, the probability that uh, our system is one in one of the available energy states with this probability. Okay? And uh, because the probability has to be normalized, we shall write down this as uh, this uh, 
so the sum over this is equal to 1 and so this is equal to a normalized probability is given by beta E r divided by sum over r where sum over r means uh, over all the available uh, energy states of the system it is exponential or we can write it exactly in the same fashion is exponential minus beta E r and this is what has been told earlier. Uh, now, we have proved that this is the probability that our system and when we say our system we really mean that any system that is under consideration that is uh, whether it is a um, classical ideal gas or it is a uh, a collection of spins in a magnetic field or a particle moving in a, you know a, a one dimensional box or uh, for that matter anything a, a group of harmonic oscillators anything. So, probability that our system is in one of the available energy states, energy states. E r. Okay. And uh, what is it good at? Because once you get the probability, this probability is nothing but the weight. Okay. Um, and this weight gives you when you calculate average values of quantities or equilibrium values of quantities, then you have to weight that particular observable or that particular quantity by this probability or by this weight. Once again, just to tell you that uh, you may have uh, different, you may be doing different courses in a semester and each of the courses have different weights. So, x i is the weight of a course that you are doing okay? and uh, this is one of your regular courses and uh, it is well known that if you, you know doing this core courses such as um, statistical mechanics, classical mechanics, quantum mechanics these are usually courses with uh, uh, standard weights or higher weights say they have weights say 4, 6 or 8. Um, whereas, if you are doing say for example, a lab course uh, which has usually a lower credit or lower weight and um, uh, so it is more important as you understand that for you to get a good grade in a course with a very large weight. Uh, and it would not matter much, not that I am saying that you should not do well in a course which carries lesser weight, but uh, your grades are more going to be decided by uh, the one that is uh, which has uh, larger weight and all that. Okay? So, um, we are uh, going to calculate average values of quantities and so on and then this average values of quantities will give us this thermodynamic uh, variables such as say for example, entropy or we will be able to derive the equation of state and so on. Uh, we will do that, but however, uh, let us stop here by saying that this is a very important formula that we have derived. It uh, You can call it as a Boltzmann weight, this is what we have said that Boltzmann weight And we will see that, that this is really a distribution because a probability is like a distribution. So, if you uh, this is for a general uh, rth uh, level or uh, the, it is the energy state that is you know denoted by E r where E r is uh, any arbitrary energy state of the system. Uh, we will see that this distribution is actually not a very broad distribution. The distribution is in fact very sharply peaked distribution. And why it is a sharply peaked distribution is that only a sharply peaked distribution that is the one with uh, a, a few states, uh, energy states have the maximum weight. And uh, this is a very important thing because if we have uh, equal weights to all the states available, all the ER states then that may not give us the, uh, the you know an equilibrium uh, uh, sort of value 
for a given thermodynamic quantity. And we have said this earlier that uh, in the phase space all the microstates are uh, equally likely to occur or they have equal a priori probability. Uh, but then uh, there is also a phase space density that we came up with which means that uh, some of the phase spaces may have more weight uh, than other uh, you know parts of the phase space and that is uh, the one that are uh, you know more important in giving us or in yielding us uh, the thermodynamic the equilibrium thermodynamic quantities such as uh, entropy, volume, pressure, temperature and so on. So, we will look at this distribution in more details and uh, do some um, calculations and uh, the examples for uh, the canonical distribution just uh, as we have done it for the micro canonical case. We will stop here. Mm -hmm.